Have you ever wondered what it's like to be in a musical, to sing about all your problems regardless of if it's appropriate or not? That's what Teen Beach Movie is. Disney is no stranger to a musical movie. Some of their most popular franchises have been about singing and dancing instead of seeking professional help like they all should, like reasonable people. Franchises such as High School Musical 1, 2 and 3, Camp Rock 1 and 2, and Lemonade Mouth, which should have had another movie. I'm still salty about that. And many, many more. But there's one difference between all of those movies and this one. It's that the main characters are aware they're trapped in a musical and they want to get out. The movie starts with the main characters, Brady and Mackenzie. She's called Mac for the rest of the movie, so it's not confusing. They're walking down the beach after catching some rad waves. Oh, I immediately regretted saying that. Pretend I didn't say that. I'm not gonna do that again. Anyways, they are walking down the beach talking about the waves that is apparently meant to be 40 feet tall that is coming the next day and they say this is a once in a lifetime wave that they'll never see again they walk into max granddad's radical crib okay i'm really done now it's just getting worse once in his house they find grandfather watching a movie from the 60s called wet side story which is definitely a pun on west side story i can't tell you if the plot is similar i've never watched it the movie wet side story is this beach paradise where the surfers and the bikers are fighting and it is apparently Brady and grandfather's favorite movie but Mac is not a fan it felt weird calling this random elderly man grandfather so I went to look up the character's actual name and it just comes up with big papa so I shall be sticking to calling him grandfather whilst they are trying to bring Mac over to the wet side get it because it's like the dark side like they normally say come over to the dark side but the movie called wet side story okay I, I found it funny don't don't judge me I thought it was a funny pun anyway Mac's aunt comes into the house saying she is here to take Mac to some expensive private school the next day Brady is shocked to learn all of this information and he looks hurt look at his face that's the face of a hurt boy crying to himself He's sobbing. He will cry himself to sleep tonight. He then storms out, telling him the reason she is going is that it was her mother's dying wish for her to go. I mean, that's not entirely accurate. Her mum just wanted her to be successful in what she wanted to do, and she took it as going to an expensive private school. Plus, her mum's dead. She won't know if you become a loser or if you become successful. You should become successful for you. Oh, and she also dumps Brady in this conversation. Brady's having a really bad day, finding out his best friend's leaving, and he's also being dumped he's definitely going to cry himself to sleep tonight the next day matt decides she wants to ride the once in a lifetime wave before she goes to the private school as she's swimming out to the wave grandfather and brady notice a big storm coming in and they call her in but she ignores them as she is determined to ride the wave brady scared for her life pops on a jet ski to go get her surprise surprise he doesn't save her and they are both engulfed by the giant wave after the wave fits them both out they swim to shore where they discover everything is different they soon realize they are in wet side story. They realize this when they come across a musical number. Brady is ecstatic and joins in the musical number. Mac is reasonably concerned considering she just got sucked into a movie. After the musical number, they follow the cast to the local diner called Big Mama. What is with the names in this movie? They have Big Papa, they have Big Mama. During the musical number, the characters introduce themselves. This is Seacat, Giggles, Rascals, and their leader, Tanner. The leader has the most basic name. Anyway, Anyway, they are in Big Mama's where Mac and Brady introduce themselves to the surfers. You might be thinking, wait, didn't you just say they told them their names? No, no, no. They did a musical number saying their names, but it was to no one. They didn't know Brady and Mac were there. They were just talking to the air, introducing themselves to the air because they're in a musical. <laughs> The bikers then enter Big Mama's, fueled by hostility and leather. I found myself so funny, why did I write that? <laughs> anyway, the bikers, the bikers are led by Butchie, accompanied by Lugna, Chi Chi, Struts, and his little sister, Layla. Again, what is with the names? I know they're probably like gang names, but we never find out their actual names at any point. I bet his actual name's Jonathan. The bikers then sing a number about how they want to basically fight the surfers, and it's called Cruising for a Bruising. And during this musical number, Brady explained the rivalry between the surfers and the bikers and how both gangs want big mamas to 
themselves. Somehow, Brady and Mac get invited to this party, and as soon as Brady says yes, they magically fast forward in time and change outfits, and Mac's surfboard randomly appears. And said surfboard was glowing earlier. You know surfboards do that, they always glow, no big deal. And also earlier, Grandfather also mentioned that the surfboard has been passed down through generations of her family, and that their family always finds their destiny whilst riding the, the surfboard. I'm sure that has nothing to do with what's going on right now. And these two pieces of information that we've learned in this movie are completely coincidental or have nothing to do with each other. So let's move on. Later at the party, Brady and Mac are arguing about whether they should stay and hang out with the movie people. Brady tells Mac that since they came in on a big wave caused by a storm, then they should be able to leave on a storm wave, which is going to happen again at the end of the so they just need to stay and chill and wait for the end of the movie to happen and relax. Mac is not having any of it and it is insistent that they try and get home quicker than wait in until the end of the movie. Whilst they are arguing, Mac falls into the arms of the lead of the musical, Tana, and Brady ends up catching Layla when she falls off the stage. These two romantic leads were meant to fall slash catch each other and then sing a musical number called Falling For You. But instead, they sing this musical number to Mac and Brady because the situation has changed. After the musical number, all of the wet side story characters are all just standing there. There was meant to be another musical number, but because the story has changed due to Brady and Mac's interference, none of the characters know what to do anymore because they're off script. Brady wants to see how badly they affected the movie by changing this scene. So they go to the lighthouse where the villains are wet side story are. Those villains plan to destroy Big Mama using a weather machine so that the villain can build a beach resort. Luckily the villain's still following the script so they go back and they figure out how to get the story back on track for the main characters. So they try and convince Tana and Layla that they are meant to be together. Brady tries to convince Layla but she just asks a bunch of questions that have nothing to do with what he was saying. And Matt tries to convince Tana but that boy has an empty head with no brain cells. There are definitely more intelligent plants than this boy. So yeah, their plan to get them together doesn't work. So they decide to switch the main characters. Brady goes to hang out with Tana and Mac has a sleepover with Layla and her friends. No one really questions who these two are. I mean, they did ask where they came from and Brady and Mac said, oh, we're from close far. And they accepted that as an answer. And then they invite these strangers into their homes less than a day after meeting them. They then talk about boys, they talk about girls. You know, normal sleepover stuff, I think. I don't know. They all bond over love or whatever through the medium of song. But the main thing I noticed in this whole sleep over scene is this girl slippers are the wrong way around the entire time she really wanted to show off those slippers i was wondering are they 1960s wet size stories version of gucci why does everyone need to see his slippers this night mac and layla have a private sleepover again this girl a traveling serial killer raised on biker girls and she would never know because they only met two days ago she invites her into her house alone during the one-on-one -on -one sleepover layla reveals that she wants to surf but her brother would never approve and Mac encourages her to do it and tells her that she will ask Brady to teach her. Brady and Mac trick the two leads into meeting up on the beach and they try and trigger a meet cute. After this is happening Mac realises they are becoming part of the movie when she falls into water but her hair remains bone dry and then she suddenly bursts into song. After the musical number they realise things are all going according to plan and they're like celebrating whilst they are patting themselves on the back for a job well done. They get kidnapped by Bertram and the lead singer from I'm in the Band. Layla and Tana fall in love with each other after a five minute conversation and then Tana sees the flower crown he gave to Mac floating in the ocean and somehow he concludes that they've been kidnapped. I don't know how he came to that conclusion, I mean he's right, but it could have just fallen off of her head and got taken by the wind into the ocean. Maybe he's secretly the Sherlock Holmes of surfer boys. Layla and Tana run into Big Mamas and say that they need to settle their future and work together to save Mac and Brady. Again, let's pretend for the sake of argument, it is an obvious thing that if you find a flower crown in the ocean that means someone's been kidnapped in the rules of this world. How do they know Brady is there too? He could have just walked off. Anyway, they will go looking for Brady and Mac. Whilst being kidnapped, Brady and Mac have a heart to heart 
and Max says she's kind of happy they ended up in the movie because she doesn't want to go to the private school. The surfers and bikers are running around like headless chickens looking for Mac and Brady. Not really. The moustache, Mr. Moustache over here, sees them coming in their general direction and then panic turns on the weather machine. The gang see the ray coming from the lighthouse and they conclude that that must be where Mac and Brady are. So realistically, if Mr. Moustache over here had just waited for them to pass and then turned it on at night, he could have gotten away with his plan. The cool cats then storm the lighthouse. Okay, that's the last one. I, they're in the lighthouse. They free Mac and Brady and they destroy the lighthouse by kind of just hitting it and pulling wires and that stops the villain. And that is the end of Wet Side Story. Mac and Brady then return to their original clothes and the totally not magical surfboard appears. Blowing up the lighthouse causes a new storm and a new 40 foot wave. So I guess a 40 foot wave are a twice in a lifetime Thing. Mac and Brady tell all of their new new musical friends that they have to go and then they swim off into the ocean to return home. No one questions why they're traveling via ocean? If someone told me they were going home and then they jumped into the ocean, I would assume they must live in Atlantis. They get home, Mac tells her aunt she's staying and then they all live happily ever after. I liked the movie overall. I feel like they could have leaned into the fact it was a musical a bit more. Yeah, they had some cliches like them swimming through the ocean and them being completely dry, but that was kind of it. It's such a cool premise of, I started thinking about if I was a musical, what would I be in? Or maybe The Wizard of Oz. But then I thought, all of that walking, <laughs> that yellow brick road seems like it's miles long. So now you no longer have to wonder what it's like to be in a musical. They sing about love and life regardless of if it's an appropriate time or not. Disney is the king of children's musical and they strike again. They also have a Teen Beach movie too, which they set up for in the post credits of this movie. The main characters from Wet Side Story show up in the real world, which is not entirely shocking. When Mac and Brady were swimming into the wave that got them home, the characters of Wet Side Story were right behind them. So I might cover the second movie, who knows? I hope you all had a great day, I hope good. Bye!